AquariumRadio.com. Aloha. This is Enki. You know me as Aquarius. And this is our age, the Sata Yuga. Time to celebrate with us. We have programs on all chakra tantra, love styles and relationship choices, counseling strategies and techniques that you can use at home. We have extraterrestrial radio where we deal with alienology, paranormal people, and we have an experiencers network. We have a section called Ancient Aliens, and the programs therein are Enki Speaks, Nimma, the mother of humanity, has her program, and we revise ancient anthropology. And most important of all, we have Peace Paradigms, because this is the age of peace, harmony and understanding, sympathy and love abound. No more falsehoods or derisions, mystic crystal dreams and visions. And here are your hosts, Janet and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Aloha and welcome to Aquarian Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Janet Kira Lesson, and here is my co-host. Aloha, this is Dr. Sasha Lesson. Today's episode on 12-30-2012 is Enki said Marduk will rule the earth. Dr. Lesson, would you like to tell our listeners what that's about? To give you a little background, uh, the uh, Nibirans, the people from the planet Nibiru, came to Earth 450,000 years ago, and uh, they established a series of mining operations, and they were transshipping gold from Earth to Mars, and from Mars they shipped it to their planet where they were turning it into white power of monoatomic gold to shield their atmosphere and keep it in. And uh, the leader of the Mars base had revolted. His name was Anzu, and he had been executed. And the commander of Earth, Enlil, uh, had appointed the son of his rival, Marduk, to run Mars base. And so Marduk, who at one point was going to uh, be in line for succession to the kingship of Nibiru uh, was being trusted with a an assignment and here he was finally become uh, uh, he couldn't be king of Nibiru because Anu had overthrown uh, the guy that was going to put Marduk in in, in uh, Nibiru but now at least Marduk had a, a, a place to work from in, in a position of some kind of power however there started to be a, a lot of difficulty as Marduk got near the inner solar system again. And it totally uh, wiped out Mars base. And so uh, it was a sort of a desperate situation. And we're following here in the Lost Book of Enki. This is now Tablet uh, 7. This is 350,000 years ago. And uh, um, Enki decided that he would do two things. One, he would uh, uh, try to find some other way he could g get his son, Marduk, employed. Uh, because uh, if Mars base was wiped out, then Marduk didn't have a power base anymore. And they decided they were going to look at the moon. And while they were on the moon, Enki got close to his son, Marduk. And he also created the scientific um, units that we still have with us today. And so what we're going to do to, to really give you a feeling for this is we're going to read, uh, Janet's going to read you from the Lost Book of Enki. So you actually get to see the words uh, that uh, Zechariah Sitchin translated from the uh, tablets that Enki left us. And so uh, it starts out, In a rocket ship did Enki and Marduk to the moon journey. Thrice they, the earth's companion, encircled the deep wound by the dragon cause they observed. By many hollows, the handiwork of smashing demons was the moon's face marked. In a place of rolling hills, they set the rocket ship down. In its midst, they landed. From the place the earth they could observe, and the expanse of the heavens. Eagles' helmets they had to don, the atmosphere was for breathing insufficient. With ease they walked about, in this and that direction they went. 
The evil dragon's handiwork was dryness and desolution, desolation. The evil dragon refers to a, a an asteroid or a, a, a chunk of uh, matter. Right, because um, it looked an asteroid or, or a comet or something streaming, how it looks like a dragon, I guess. That's right. Unlike Lamu, it is, for a way station, it is unsuitable. Lamu is Mars. Right. To his father, Marduk was saying. Let us abandon this place. Let us to Earth return. Do not be hasty, my son, so was Enki to Marduk saying. Are you not by the celestial dance of Earth and Moon and Sun enchanted? Unobstructed from here is the viewing. The quarter of the sun is at hand. The earth like a globe in the void by nothing is hanging. With our instruments we can scan the distant heavens. The handiwork of the creator of all in his solitude we can admire. Let us stay, the circuits observe, how the moon circles the earth, how the earth its circuits around the sun is making. So Enki, by the sights agitated, to his son Marduk was saying, by his father's words, Marduk was persuaded, in the rocket ship they made their dwelling. For one circuit of earth, for three circuits on the moon, they remained. Its motions about the earth they measured, the duration of a month they calculated. For six circuits of earth, for twelve circuits about the sun, earth's year they measured how the two were entwined, causing the luminaries to disappear, they recorded. So what we have here is the months established by the moon and the years, and this is what Enki and Marduk did. So um, how many years were they were, were they there? Was that 12, 12 years? Yeah, 12 circuits about the sun. Mm -hmm. So they stayed there 12 Earth years. Then, to the sun's quarter, they attention gave the paths of Mumu and Lamu. Laham, Lahamu, they observed, they studied. So Mumu is the uh, Earth, right? No, uh, it isn't. Uh, I think that we're talking about Venus and... Uh, anyway. I'd have to look this up. I'm not remembering yeah, right now. Yeah, the Earth and the Moon, Lamu, the sun's second quarter constituted. Six were the celestials of the lower waters. So was Enki to Marduk explaining. Six were the celestials of the upper waters, beyond the bar, the hammered bracelet they were. Anshar and Kishar, Anu and Nud. There's Imud, Neptune and Uranus and the outer planets. Gaga and Nibiru, these were the six others. Gaga's Pluto. Twelve were they all. Of twelve did the sun and its family make the count. Of the upheavals most recent, Marduk of his father was inquiring, Why have seven celestials in a row taken, places taken? So was he, his father, asking. Their circuits about the sun, Enki then considered. Their grand band around the sun, their progenitor, Enki, carefully observed. The positions of earth and moon therein on the chart Enki marked out, by the motions of Nibiru of the sun, not a descendant, the width of the great band he outlined, the way of Anu, the king, to name it, Enki decided. In the expanse of the deep heavens, the stars did father and son observe. So so what's happening here is there's, he's seeing the movement of each of these planets in their uh, circling around the sun and how these correlated with each other and how they, how they uh, correlated with the Earth's movement and the movement of the inner planets. And all this is being charted by Marduk and Enki from the moon. From the moon. By their proximities, the groupings was Enki fascinated. By the circuit of the heavens from horizon to horizon, he drew image, images of 12 constellations. So this is the birth of the zodiac. System. That's right. In the great band, the way of Anu, one each with the sun's family of twelve, he paired. To each one he designated a station by names they were to be called. Then in the heavens below the way of Anu, whence Nibiru the sun is approaching, a band-like way he designed, the way of Enki he had, a de he had des designated. Sorry, To the twelve constellations by their shapes he also allotted. The heavens above the way of Anu, the upper tier, the way of Enlil he called. Therein, too, the stars into twelve constellations he assembled. Thirty-six were the stars' constellations in the three ways where they located. In three zones, basically, he's saying. 
so um, so he, he talked about he created the zodiac and he he gave names to the constellations henceforth when Nibiru nears and departs from earth by the stars sta stations its course shall be known so be, they know when Nibiru is coming and uh, just how far it is and how long it'll take and but uh, and uh, if it's coming pro through a certain constellation, so yes. he could map it out. So he was basically mapping the heavens that he could observe from the moon and earth. So will the earth's position designated as around the sun it travels. The start of the cycle of celestial time, the measure Anki to Marduk indicated. When on earth I had arrived, the station that was ending by me, the station of the fishes, was named. Pisces. The one that followed after my name tied, he of the waters I called. Aquarius. So Anki, with satisfaction and pride to his son, Marduk was saying, Your wisdom the heavens embraces, your teachings my own understandings extend. But on earth and on Nibiru, knowledge and rulership are separated, so did Marduk to his father say. My son, my son, what is... What is that you do not know? What is it that you are missing? To him, Enki was saying, The secrets of the heavens, the secrets of the earth with you have I shared. Alas, my father, Marduk was saying, there was agony in his voice. When the Anunnaki and the Absol, the toil ceased and the primitive worker you set to fashion, not my mother, but Nimma, the mother of Ninurta, to assist you was summoned. Not I, but Nigashida, of me, the younger, to help you, was invited. With them, not with me, your knowledge of life and death did you share. So basically, uh, when he was creating uh, the uh, primitive worker, yeah. Homo sapiens, he invited Nima and, um, and his other son. Thank you, invited Nima and Nigashida, Thoth. And he didn't invite Marduk to work with him. That's right. So we continue. My son, Enki to Marduk, responded, To you, command was given of the Ajiji and the Lamu to be supreme. That's of the astronaut corps on Mars. And Mars. Alas, my father to him, Marduk, was saying, Of supremacy by fate, we are deprived. You, my father, are Anu's firstborn, yet Enlil, not you, was the legal heir. You, my father, were the first to splash down and Eridu establish. Yet Eridu is in Enlil's domain. Yours is in the distant Abzu. So, Africa. Yeah, so um, Anu had given, through, by the drawing of the, of the um, straws, Anu had given yeah. Enlil rulership of the earth. Yeah, it wasn't really a, a fair draw. It's perfectly obvious that Anu was favoring Enlil because uh, Enlil would be his heir and trying to crowd out Marduk because the deal with where Marduk would be the heir was dependent on Alalu, whom he'd over, who Anu had overthrown. And so Enlil was deliberately tilting everything toward his own uh, heir, toward Enlil. So basically Anu was reneging on his deal. He was reneging on his deal. With, with uh, Alalu. Yeah, he was saying that since look, this was made under duress, I, I, I did it, I, I, I said that uh, the child of Enki and, my, and Alalu's daughter, Damkina, um, which is Marduk, uh, can be ruler and you can be in, in charge, Alalu. And he did that, uh, Anu did that to avoid a civil war. But after uh, uh, seven shars, uh, or, or circuits of uh, Nibiru, uh, Anu overthrew Alalu and said, deal's off, and I'm taking over in my heir, who is Enlil, not Marduk, who is uh, to be Alalu's heir, is taking over. So I'll continue. I am your firstborn. By your legitimate spouse on Nibiru I, was I born. Yet the gold in the city of Ninurta is assembled, therefrom to send or to withhold. The survival of Nibiru is in his hands. In my hands it is not. Now to earth we are returning. What will my task be? Am I to fame and kingship faded, or again to humiliated be? In silence did Enki embrace his son. On the desolate moon to him a promise made. Of that.